What's going on everybody, Mike here. Welcome to another Symfony tutorial. Today we're going to talk about cache management. So let me sign in and show you our cache management screen. I'm going to go to the functions area here. Under our functions navigations tab, we have a side tab called cache management. This is where we host all of our cache management functions. We have them separated into blocks like this block is for tilts, then for deposits, save, petty cache, and then all of our reports. Now, in order for cache management to function properly, we're gonna need to have at least one till, one deposit, and one safe. And of course, you can have multiple tills and multiple saves and deposits. In order to view what is open at the current time, we can use this key here at the bottom called view cache status. So this is the first thing we do when we come in the morning. We click on view cache status and we see there are no tills open, no deposits, and we just have our safe with our $2,000 in it. So the first thing we need to do is open a deposit to have a place for all the cash to go. To do this, we just simply click open bank deposit. I'm gonna answer yes. This is gonna be our AM deposit and click okay. So now the deposit is open. We can click again on the view cash status and we can see it open right here and there's no money in it. The next thing we have to do is assign a till. Now there's two ways to assign a till. We can either assign the till and then assign the employee to the till. And usually you would do this if the manager does it before the employees arrived to work. Or we can do both procedures with just one button click using the quick start till key. Now, in order to use the quick start kill key, we need to have the employee signed in. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to select our till number one, because that's the one I took out of the safe. And click OK. Assign till number one to drawer one. I'm going to answer yes. And that's it. Now the till is assigned. And the employee is ready to start work. If we go back to our view cash status button, we can see we have our safe with just $1,900 because $100 went into our till and our deposit with no money in it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a sale. I'm going to go to our food key, to our breakfast section. I'm going to ring in an American breakfast for position one. Over hard eggs and then a pastry basket, also for position one. And then I'm gonna close this to cash. Now, that put $24 in our till. If we go back to our function screen and we look at our cash status right now, you can see our till has $124.38. The initial $100 plus the $24.38 cash sale that we did. And the employees would work like this all throughout the day and enter cash into the system. When the employees are done with their shift, we would go ahead and count and close the till. Now, the way we have our system program is when we click this count and close till key, first we count the till, then we deposit the money, everything over the $100 gets deposited, and then the till gets closed automatically. So all three operations are done with the one key, which makes it nice and simple for our managers. When I click the key, it asks me for a reference. I'm just going to enter my name. And now I get presented with this count sheet. So all I have to do is go through all the pennies, rolls of pennies and dimes and quarters and dollars and everything. And I just click next on each one and I enter the amount that I find. Okay, I don't enter the total value, just the amount. So I'm going to say I found four $1 bills. I found no fives. I found two tens. And just for easy, I'm just going to say I found one $100 bill. So right now I counted $124, but the system expected $124.38 based on sales. So I have a, ver a negative variance of 38 cents. Now, when you arrive at this point, if you have a larger variance or you have a variance that is not acceptable, then you can go back by clicking the previous key and count again. 
If you count again and you reach the same value, it means that the employee uh, gave the wrong change or something happened in the till. At this point, you can save your count and then go and talk to the employee. Or if you accept this, you will just click OK. Now, if we take a look at the view cache status screen, we're going to see that our till got closed and the initial amount got returned back into the safe. And then our deposit now contains $24. And you can leave the deposit open all throughout the day and close all the tills that you have and all the money would go into the deposit. When you are ready to go to the bank, you can reconcile the bank deposit. You can use your view cash status to see uh, the total amount and count your deposit to make sure everything is correct. And then when you are ready, you can just click reconcile back deposit. And then this is going to get closed. And now if we take a look at our cash status, we are back where we started the previous day. Other functions we can do to the tills are paid ins and paid outs. We can adjust the starting amount of the till in the morning before we start our sales. Um, if we have a particularly busy day or if it's a holiday and you think the employees will need uh, more money for change, uh, we can do the same for the deposits. Uh, we can deposit cash, adjust the cash deposit. We can transfer funds uh, from the bank deposit to the till or to the safe. For the safe, we can also do paid ins and paid outs. If we need to adjust the amount of dollars that we have in the safe, remove funds, transfer funds, and the same with petty cash. And now let's take a look at some reports. First, we'll take a look at the till reports. We have these two at the top, a till report and a till banking report. But the difference between them is that the till report will show us information about the current till and the till banking report will show us information about all the tills on the floor. You can run this report if you want to know what tills are open and who are, uh, who are the employees assigned to them. A report that we run very often is the over short detail report. I'm going to show you how that looks like. I'm just going to click run report here. And then these are the tills that were open today and then the shortages that they had. So the first one was for 4 cents, 38 cents, 68 cents, and this one uh, 34 cents for a total of $1.44. We usually print this at the end of the day and we submit it to accounting so they know what's going on. You can click print and print it here. And then we have a safe report and a bank deposit report. We tend not to use these as much because we only have one deposit open and one safe open at the same time. So we find it much easier to use the view cash status that will show us the safe information and the deposit information at a glance. Next, we have the employee financial and the cashier financial. Now, both of these we use to balance cash, but the difference between them is that this particular financial report will follow the employee. So if you have just one employee working on the workstation for the day, the cashier financial and the employee financial will be identical. But if you have, let's say, two or three employees assigned to just one workstation and they're working by rotation, then the employee financial report will show details of each individual employee and the cashier financial report will show all the cash totals that happen on that particular workstation. If you're trying to balance your cash and you have multiple people working on that till, meaning server and a manager or two servers or two cashiers then use this cashier financial report so let's take a look at the employee financial report i'm just going to click run and here we see all of our net sales tax collected and everything and then this is our tender media so this is the total cash that we took in and then the number of transactions so this is what interests us the most regarding cash the cashier financial report will show us that same data. And again, the cashier financial only balances cash. As you see, this one is much shorter, but it doesn't show credit card information. It doesn't show top sales items or anything like that. This one is just used to balance cash. If you are interested in more Symphony tutorials, we have created an entire course where you can learn everything you need to maintain your Oracle Micros POS system. And as a special thank you, I also included a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below.
leave a like if you found this helpful and thanks for watching.